Jury deliberations have begun in the R. Kelly trial as the disgraced singer faces racketeering and sex trafficking charges. The prosecution saying he used lies, manipulation, threats, and physical abuse to dominate his victims, and he used his money and his public persona to hide his crimes in plain sight. Kelly denies the charges, his defense arguing the government allowed witnesses to lie, saying many of them accusing Kelly of sexual and physical abuse were in consensual relationships with the singer and are now trying to monetize their testimonies. Let's bring in host and legal analyst at Law and Crime Network, Terry Austin, for more on a trial that a lot of people are paying attention to. Good to see you. It's good to see you too, Kira. Thank you. All right. So the jury deliberated for hours on Friday uh, before the case was adjourned until today, and they have not yet reached a verdict. So we also know that the jury asked for evidence related to one of the witnesses. So what factors um, is the jury considering right now? And what are some of the standout parts from the trial so far likely to stick out to them? I think everybody is watching to see what these questions are going to be about. The first question, as you correctly point out, was about one of the victims, Sonia was her name. And that victim actually testified that she was sexually assaulted by him. And she testified that she was locked up and that he abused her and she was afraid to talk about it before. She said that she ate something, she felt faint. And I think that the jury wants to determine why she didn't come out before this, because it happened years ago, and also whether or not she could actually escape. They asked for the floor plan of the studio where she was being kept. So I think they are very carefully looking at all 11 of the victims, nine of whom were women, two were men, and they are really trying to determine whether or not this was consensual or whether or not this was rape or something against the will of these women. So, Terry, you may remember earlier this month, Kelly's executive assistant um, of 16 years, Diana Copeland, spoke out about what she says she saw inside Kelly's homes, including live-in girlfriends. How do you think that her testimony uh, impacted this case and will continue to impact the case? I think someone who is working so closely with Kelly, who is his executive assistant, who has seen him every day while she was working for him, has an impact on the jury. They are going to understand that she saw what was going on. Unlike the five witnesses that the defense put on, they didn't see anything that was going on behind closed doors. On the other hand, I thought she was a bit sort of even-handed. It was almost as though she wanted to say what the truth was in terms of what was going on behind closed doors, what she knew. But at the other hand, she didn't really come out and say anything that was extremely damaging to him, as I think she could have been even more so. She also had some interviews that were outside of the courtroom. So I think the jury is looking at her as though she had an inside view and wondering whether or not things were as bad as she said or actually could have even been worse when it was behind closed doors. Well, and then you have this documentary series, uh, Surviving R. Kelly, and it's featuring women giving very detailed accounts of the alleged sexual and mental abuse. How does this documentary series, as well as the public scrutiny of R. Kelly, play into all this as well? You know, I think it's interesting because some of the jurors actually said they did not see Surviving R. Kelly, which is the documentary that we're talking about. But I think for the most part, everyone in the public has seen that and everyone has heard all of these women who are talking about all the way from the first witness who got on the stand, Geronda Price, and she actually, or Pace, and she actually was in the documentary. And I think that they are seeing it's not just one, but it's multiple people. And when you have so many people saying the same thing, their testimony was really virtually the same, and they said the same thing in the documentary. They said he was controlling, he was abusive, they made him call him daddy, that he, you know, spanked them, that he withheld food, they weren't supposed to be looking at men. And when you have everyone saying the same thing, I think that is definitely going to work against R. Kelly. When you're in the public and you are subject to all of these 
different allegations on television. People can actually watch it. I think it does have an impact at the end of the day. People start to believe what they see. We'll follow it along with you, Terry Austin. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.